Microsoft have released an AI version of Quake 2, the classic first-person shooter that served as a pretty big leap forward for the genre. And you can play it right now, but would you want to? Well, it all depends on how you're looking at it. Which does lead to the question, why does this exist? And where is it all going? Well, grab your railgun and some quad damage and let's go find out. So yeah, Microsoft Research have released an AI version of Quake 2, which I guess kind of tracks considering that just around six months ago, Google Labs released their AI powered version of Doom. So in some ways, Quake 2 does make for a logical next step, although there probably are some other reasons, not the least of which including that Microsoft owns Quake 2. So running through some quick technical information about the project and a brief history of Quake 2, Quake 2 was released on December 9th, 1997, developed by id Software and published by Activision. John Carmack spearheaded the game's engine, while Kevin Cloud took an overall leadership role. From a technical standpoint, the Quake 2 engine was innovative for its time, and as a big note, it allowed for the selection between software and OpenGL rendering of its graphics through the use of dynamic link libraries. Quake 2 was critically well received at the time and even to this day still appears on numerous top 50 games of all time lists, but to me the game's real legacy will always be cemented in multiplayer, releasing in a Goldilocks moment between LAN parties and the wide availability of high speed internet. Quake 2 was also released on the Nintendo 64 and the original PlayStation in 1999 and eventually did make its way over to the Xbox 360, albeit as a bonus disc included with Quake 4. Branching off of that Xbox release, we can fast forward today and yes, Microsoft Research have released an AI version of Quake 2. This project is brought to us by Muse, Microsoft's family of AI world agents, which actually in turn is an updated version of WAM, uh, this one with an additional M standing for World and Human Action Mass Git Model. I did take a look at the previous iteration of WAM, the one with one less M, when Microsoft unveiled their AI version of Bleeding Edge. Uh, that video is linked down below. Now we'll dig into some of the tech specs on this version of Quake 2, but I do want to clarify because there does seem to be some confusion out there exactly what this model is because really this is a research project and to be honest it's really not a game as I have previously covered on the channel what Microsoft and well Google Labs with its genie project are really doing is creating on the fly video and world model generations of these games that you are able to interact with. Now, the fact that at its core, what we are looking at is AI generated video, granted controllable AI generated video, which is pretty remarkable. It does still have all of the problems that are inherent to AI video. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but first I wanna focus on, you know, the improvements that have been made to Muse. The big jump forward with this model over its predecessor is the fact that it is now generating at, well, 10 frames a second. And I, I listen, I know by modern gaming standards, that is totally laughable, but that is up about 10 times from the previous version, which was only generating one frame a second. Additionally, the video is now outputting at 640 by 360, as opposed to 300 by 180. So it has doubled. And to note, uh, the last time we saw this was only six weeks ago. And finally, in terms of training, the Quake version of Wham! only took one week of cumulative training video. So like literally a week solid of Quake videos uh, to train up. And yes, while that does sound like a lot, it is important to note that it is down from the seven years of material it took to generate up the Bleeding Edge version of this. Although to be fair, the Quake model was only trained on one level of Quake 2. All that said, very impressive from a technical standpoint in a very short amount of time, but does that make for a great game? No, it doesn't, at least not yet. As mentioned earlier, we do continue to have these persistent problems with AI generated game models, the largest of which is object permanence. This one in particular has a context length of about 0.9 seconds. So if it's not looking at something within less than a second, it will forget that it's there. As mentioned by the Microsoft team, uh, the model actually isn't very good at counting either. So the health value is not super reliable. Additionally, from a game experience standpoint, uh, controls are limited to the keyboard, so no mouse, and there is a limited amount of time in which you can play it. 
So diving into it, uh, as you can see, we control with our WSAD keys, um, and then we can look around using the arrow keys, which is really funky. Um, there, oh, we got a enemy there. You fire with your F key, uh, which is a little bit weird. Um, and this guy is just a total butts. Forgive my playing here. This is uh, this is actually not. This is very difficult. Uh, so yeah, this guy is a total bullet sponge. Uh, but you know what we can do is just turn and look away from him for a few minutes, and that, not even a few minutes, a few seconds, and yeah, and now he's gone. Um, so yeah, uh, from a yeah. Uh, from a game experience, it is a little bit on the janky side. I can't even get through this door. Here's kind of a weird hack too. If you look up at the sky and then look back down because there is no object permanence, you can actually use this as like a teleporter as well. Um, I mean, completely unintended and uh, you know not uh, supposed to be part of the game at all. But um, yeah, I mean, just it's kind of interesting in seeing how the model works, I guess. Oh, I got stuck looking at this guy. Uh, and there you go. So um, you have about that long and then the game is over. So yeah, not necessarily great, leading to a lot of online criticism along the lines of, you know, a Raspberry Pi could run Quake better, which is true. But again, that is not what this model is doing. It's not running a thing, it's creating a thing. As to the larger question of why they're doing this, well, at a February event, Phil Spencer, the CEO of Microsoft Gaming said, you can imagine a world where from gameplay data and video that a model could learn old games and really make them portable to any platform where these models could run. We've talked about game preservation as an activity for us and these models and their ability to learn completely how a game plays without the necessity of the original game engine running on original hardware opens up a ton of opportunity. Now, granted, all of that is much further down the road, but I mean, well, hey, you gotta take the first step at some point or another. It's interesting because I've been covering generative AI in video games for a bit now. And while we have for sure seen some improvement in areas like AI generated NPCs, and we have seen a lot of movement in the area of 3D generated assets outside of an ecosystem like Roblox, which now allows you to generate 3D objects within Roblox, fully generating a AAA game via ChatGPT is still a ways off. Although there are some very good use cases such as Nunu, which is using AI agents to run QA analysis on games. I do think that it's safe to say that video games have not had their, you know, chat GPT moment yet. But given the rather rapid improvement of Microsoft's Muse and, you know, whatever Google is cooking up with Genie 3, I do think that there is a good likelihood we will see the start of it at least this year. Leading to my proposal for a new AI video game benchmark, can it generate crisis? I'll let you know as soon as one of them can. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.